Hi, everyone, and welcome to Kerberos News. Sorry, there's no news show today. Last minute, everything got swapped around. So, But I wanted to make sure we kept the interview with Scott because he's got the important event coming up on the 9th. So I wanted to make sure we kept that. But there'll be no stories. We're going to talk for about 15 minutes about your event, Scott, and then we're going to go off the air. So do you want to start by telling everybody what the event is and when it is and all of that? Yeah, again, thank, thanks for having me on again, Shane. You know how much this means to me. Um, the event um, that you're talking about, I am assuming, is uh, the unforgivable sin that we have going on this Saturday. Um, mm. This Saturday is um, April 9th, which will be the third year, um, third anniversary of my son's death. Um, mm. For those who haven't heard Danny's story, um, we lost him because he had, was late on a $20 payment to his ACA's managed Medicaid plan. Um, and because of that, as a result, they cut him off his medication, which was risperidone and had a known suicidal risk of withdrawal. And it was on April 9th of 2019 that Danny took his life after super gluing his seatbelt shut and driving his truck into the Mohawk River. Um, the reason it's called the unforgivable sin is mm -hmm. The Catholic Church used to have a teaching called the unforgivable sin, where is if somebody took their own life, it was an act of blasphemy against God, and they were forever condemned to uh, purgatory for eternity and never allowed into the gates of heaven. And the former uh, CEO of Fidelis Care and founder of Fidelis Care is a Father Patrick Frawley, an ordained priest of the Brooklyn Catholic uh, diocese. So our demand on April 9th is for Father, oh, and I might mention Father Frawley has been since promoted to VP of Centene, get this mm -hmm. title, Social Responsibilities. And I believe Ryan Knight said it best the other day when he said Jesus Christ after that. And I responded, yes, exactly. They're selling poor people on Medicaid, Jesus Christ. And denying health care for his profits of five point nine million dollars a year, for denying Medicaid patients health care. So our demand is for VP of Centene, Father Patrick Frawley, to step down from his position of VP and securing a five point nine million dollars a year salary from denying poor people health care, and join us in our fight like Wendell Potter did from. Cigna for single payer universal health care. We're also further demanding that Patrick Frawley, after stepping down, fight tooth and nail to get Medicare for all to replace his employer, Centene, which is the biggest beneficiary of the um, managed Medicaid plan since its enactment. And until that time can be reached, because we know that's a very steep hill to climb. We can this year get the New York Health Act passed to replace his founding company, Fidelis Care, and take money away from these monsters that would kill our children. Oh, yeah. And save the children here in New York. Now, here's or, my question. Yeah. We're also giving Father Frawley an ultimatum. We're saying that he can admit that no man of God would ever profit off the suffering and the deaths of the poorest among us by denying them medic that them health care and Medicaid and renounce his title of priest. Hmm. So here's my question. Is he actually now I understand the priests have to take a vow of poverty. Has that, that been, was, yeah, that was that something was, I was um, concerned about as well. And I looked into it and it appears that they no longer have to take a vow of poverty. And it depends on which um, sect of the Catholic Church you're talking about. But the vow that they take today is to take a, a vow of simplicity consistent with those of they wish to lead or uh, wish to serve. So if Mr. Brawley is serving Mr. Neerdoff, the CEO of Centene, which makes $26.7 million a year, mm -hmm. I guess his $5.9 million a year is simplicity, right? Because that's who he's serving. He's definitely not serving the people on Medicaid with having a corporation that he can sell for $3.8 billion. No. Now, is he a practicing priest? Like, does he do sermons and all of that? Well, according to my research, um, the 
Catholic diocese uh, decided to let him resign from or release him of his uh, obligation to the church. So he's retired priest, but he still has the title priest. And I would assume that was to save them the shame of having a millionaire priest denying Medicaid patients health care. Now, now they take a vow of simplicity, but I know before they had taken a vow of poverty. Do we know when Father Farrelly became a priest and if he, which vow he had to take himself? That, that I'm unsure of. I could definitely look into it. Um, it said, I, I do know that the church had told him that, you know, he could resign, you know, or he resign, be re released of his duties. You know, mm -hmm. so I guess that at that point he would still then be allowed to be profit off the poor, I guess, and still keep a title priest. Now, has the Catholic Church or any sect of the Catholic Church come out to renounce what he's doing here? Um, not as of yet, and that would be one of my hopes for this. Um, actually, what I'm hoping for is that I could find um, a, a real person who is a man of God and believes in the teachings that he's taught. I mean, I, I'm a bit of a hypocritical because I am a, an atheist myself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I believe there are very moral and just people within these churches that don't believe that what this man is doing is right. And I don't believe we need stained glass windows to teach us that you can't profit off the suffering of the poor. But I'm hoping somebody who does believe that, you know, there is a man of God out there or that there is a God out there and believes he is a person of good and not evil that they will stand up and say, this is wrong. You can't represent our faith this way. You know? So if any, if any um, leader, faith leader would like to join us, I would love to hear from you. You can reach me at Scott Desno at Gmail or on Twitter at Scott Desno. Okay. Um, so no religious leaders have come out to condemn Father Frowley at this time from the Catholic Church. Um, I've had religious leaders agree with me that this is hypocrisy, but none that will stand on a soapbox next to me and demand that he renounce his title of priest or step down from this position of legalized manslaughter for profit. Okay. So uh, what I think you'll find very difficult is a priest who is willing to call out another priest even though they disagree with this priest. I think you'll find it very difficult to find someone with the courage to do that because they, they're a tight-knit group. That, that seems to be what I'm finding, but I, I still have hope that, that I, I've met a lot of um, people in the churches, and they're very moral, just people. And I know many of them are disgusted that there is a millionaire priest profiting off the poor like this. You know, and there has to be one that is so strong in their faith that they have to stand next to me and say, this is hypocrisy. There is no other way to put this but hypocrisy. You can't preach. That you take care of the poor and you heal mm -hmm. the sick and then profit by denying that. Will this be the only event against? Oh, Father thank you so much for asking that question. Absolutely not. There's actually. Um six solidarity events going on across the country at the same time. Um, there is one in Tacoma, Washington, being hosted by uh, Red Beret founder, Laura Fielding. Mm -hmm. And then in Sacramento, amazing activist Sakura Ford is holding one in Sacramento. Then in Fayetteville, Arkansas, um, Brandy of the Red Berets is also hosting a vigil on the courthouse steps, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. um, another amazing activist reached out to me and she is hosting an event in Albany at 2 p.m. right outside of the um, Capitol in Albany. At, and then also in New York City, uh, the New York City DSA had already pre-planned a bike rally in support of the New York Health Act. And I had reached out to them and they are coordinating the vigil portion of our event with theirs. And seriously. One, two, three. I'm pretty. Oh, wait. And I also just heard that there's also another Red Beret, Fran, out of Florida, who will also be hosting a candlelight vigil at her place. 
I believe that makes seven solidarity events mm. in total, if I've got them all right. <laughs> hmm. Okay. And if Father Frowley refuses after all these events, will you be back? Well, my son isn't coming back. The 68,000 plus lives a year that they murder are not coming back. We are not going away until they stop mm -hmm. killing our children. We are never stopping. We will always be back. And we are also um, going to be hosting a digital day of action as well, where we are going to be releasing a um, demand letter, which is going to echo my demands the very next day on Friday night. So keep your ear to the ground for that one. Um, mm -hmm. We are going to be releasing the letter, asking people to download it and to physically mail the copy out to Father Frawley himself at Centene, as well as we are going to have a link. We're hoping to have a link where you can find your local legislators and carbon copy them as well and mail it to them. Mm -hmm. So when did you find out that Father Frawley was actually running this insurance company at this high level? Did anybody know? How is this not a bigger scandal? Well, it, it actually was a pretty big deal when everything came down and there was a lot of news and um, the New York Post actually had commented about how it was crazy that this priest was profiting. And there also, after some investigation, it was odd that there was a sister foundation set up directly after the sale of Fidelis Care 217 for some Christian help thing that was the exact same amount, $3.8 billion, that Father Frawley made off of the sale. So it, was, it looks like some dark money funneling going on, but there, and there was a lot of reporting on it. But to answer your question, when we first lost Danny, I actually started investigating to find out you know, who was the CEO and all this. And mm -hmm. that's when I found out that at that time, it looked as though Father Frawley was the CEO of Fidelis at that time. Because that's what all the stories talked about was the sale that Father Frawley made to Centene during the, advan um, the advancement of managed Medicaid plan in 2018. What the stories didn't talk about was how he had just been promoted four months prior to that in January of 2019 to that VP position, you know, securing a $5.9 million a year salary. So it, he had 4.9, he gets an extra million dollars a year after he sells a $3.8 billion a year industry to Centene, mm -hmm. which I might also add, Centene had been sued previously in 2018. And I, again, I can never remember the two states. I got it. It's hard to find the search because they've been sued so many times. But I believe it was Missouri and Idaho for $26.7 million for making it difficult for Medicaid patients to receive access to health care. In other words, that there was no providers that carried their plans. So they couldn't get health care. So they were denying health care, which we all know results in deaths. You know, denying health care is a certain percentage of those people will die. And they know this. So 26.7 million on a, in 2018, $60.1 billion a year industry is nothing to them. They expected these lawsuits and they put it in their premiums so that they could kill the people and have the people that are killing pay for their lawsuits. Mm, Holy shit, how gross. A freak. So, who will be speaking at this event? The one in New York. Right now we have a total of seven speakers, but I expect we're going to have some surprise speakers pop up this week mm -hmm. because we um, got the endorsement of the campaign for New York Health and Ursula Rosam, who is also one of my speakers. You know, she's got plenty of great contacts and, you know, she's reached out to the Buffalo DSA and we're probably going to get some speakers from there. But the current ones we have, you know, of course, are me, um, as I mentioned, Ursula Rosam from Campaign for New York Health. We have the amazing civil rights activists out of D.C., uh, Black Panther, Afeni. Um, then we have uh, Lisa Theobald coming out of Pennsylvania. 
We have Catherine Lewandowski, who is on the board for whole Washington, as well as a registered nurse coming out of Washington State. Then we also have um, a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of this one, Teresa McComan. She is running for uh, New York State Senate in uh, my neighboring district and has been a huge supporter of the New York Health Act plus suicide prevention. She showed up at so many of my events, and I cannot tell you how important it is that we get Teresa on the ballot and into this seat because we only had enough votes in the Senate by one to pass the New York Health Act. We get Teresa in there. She's going to be a bulldog that's going to hold her Andrea Cousins' feet to the fire and say, no, we're going to get this bill on the floor because we don't have enough people putting pressure on Andrea so she can shelve it when their people aren't spitching about it. So we need people like Teresa McCallman in there so that can get done. Um, also, Amanda mm-hmm. Grabowski, she's another health impacted healthcare activist um, who's lost her husband due to the greed of the insurance industry. And she will be sharing her story as well, because, again, I'm not fighting to save Danny. We've already missed that opportunity three years ago. I'm stop fighting to stop the monster who killed Danny from killing other people's children, for killing other people's husbands. 68,000 lives a year. Every single one of them was somebody's child. Absolutely. So one more time, where can everyone go if they want to come to the event? And how can more people contact you to get information? Um, yeah, if you go to actionnetwork.org and just type in the search for the unforgivable sin, you can find the link that way. Also, a small ask is we do have a small fundraiser um, at GoFundMe for the Unforgivable Sin. Also, you could just type that in. We have seven speakers traveling. Most of them are traveling between eight and six hours back and forth plus hotels. So we need money for gas and tolls and hotel fare. If anybody can donate, we'd really appreciate it. And um, as far as the solidarity events, if you go to my um, Twitter page, Scott Desno, my my pin tweet is the event uh, thread and the solidarity events are all down there. So you can find out about the Sacramento event, the Tacoma event, Fayetteville, Albany and New York City and, and Florida and any of the other events that are going on at the same time. Absolutely. Thanks, Scott, for joining us today. And thank you for having me on again, Shane. Again, I can't tell people enough. Please, you've got to come to the event link, sign up, tell us you're going to be there. We need to make sure that the insurance companies know that we're not playing. We need a big showing so that they know that we're not just a couple of people that say, oh, this ain't right, because this ain't right. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so everyone check the Kerberos Twitter later. I'm going to tweet out the GoFundMe because I was, um, because I don't have the link in front of me. So Scott, if you could send me the GoFundMe later, I'll put it out from the Kerberos Media Twitter. So everyone thank who wants to donate, can donate. All right, thank you very much. Thanks, Scott. Hey, bye bye.